CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network, presents the following program. What is our obligation? Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and your strength? That's the number one commandment. God says this, because you have set your love on me, therefore I will. I will rescue him. I will protect him. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, folks, that's the reward of loving God. Remembering the life and legacy of CBN founder Pat Robertson. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of Faith Nation. I'm John Jessup. And good evening from our Washington studio. I'm Jenna Browder. He was a broadcaster, educator, author, humanitarian, and most importantly, a minister of the gospel. Pat Robertson has passed away at the age of 93. The founder of the Christian Broadcasting Network, Pat's legacy spans far beyond what you see on CBN programming. Here's a look back at the life of a man defined by his unshakable faith in God. John F. Kennedy was president when Pat Robertson, an ex-Marine and the son of a U.S. Senator, opened a bank account with $3 and created a broadcast network that would one day reach six continents. He has no money to speak of, and he decides the Lord wants him to have that station, and they wanted to sell it for $100,000, which is a lot of money now, a lot more back then. And when it was all said and done, Pat got it for free. So that means not only did he have faith, but he was a good negotiator, too. In 1966, he began hosting one of the longest-running programs in television history. And from the set of the 700 Club, Robertson transformed Christian television. Oh, we've got a wonderful audience and a wonderful program. Robertson once said he was a newsman at heart, and by the 1970s, he was interviewing military and political leaders, such as Israel's Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin and Georgia Governor Jimmy Carter, who won the White House with the support of evangelicals. Four years later, he was part of the conservative leadership that helped Ronald Reagan capture the presidency. And by 1988, he was running for the presidency himself. He shattered the stained glass window. He shattered the glass ceiling and engage the process. And from that point on, I believe that people of faith were taken seriously beyond the church house into the White House. Robertson stunned the political world with his second place finish in the first in the nation Iowa caucuses. He lost the Republican nomination to George Herbert Walker Bush, but changed the face of American politics. When you think of Pat Robertson, I think the, one of the major lessons you learn is that if, if you have a dream, go after it, even if you fall short of it, to go after the presidency against all odds. Robertson expanded his political influence, bringing thousands of evangelicals into the process with the founding of the Christian Coalition. He also started the American Center for Law and Justice to protect religious freedoms. Pat has always had this vision to go where a lot of people don't go. And you know, when you do that, sometimes you're criticized by people. He's been a risk taker in the best sense of the word, a visionary, a dreamer, but someone whose message was the gospel. Then with his return to CBN, Robertson took the ministry global, dramatically extending Christian programming to 150 nations in more than 100 languages with satellites and with the language translations and the things that we've had available, uh, we have probably seen more people come to the Lord through CBN than any other organization in the world. But it, it wasn't me, it was God. Robertson received both praise and heavy criticism for some of his political and social comments. But his humanitarian efforts didn't make as many headlines. Through Operation Blessing, he helped millions of poor and needy in every corner of the planet. The ministry has delivered more than a billion pounds of food to hungry Americans and assisted the victims of disasters such as Hurricane Katrina. All these homes represented dreams, represented vision, represented the hopes and aspirations of people, and it's all gone. 
The late Jack Hayford spoke of the ministry's deep and lasting effect. Just raw Christian compassion, always attended with a remembrance that we're being compassionate in order to show Jesus and the testimony of the cross. And that's been fairly low profile in his ministry in many people's minds, but it, globally it has been powerfully impacting. After the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, Robertson joined his friend, Billy Graham, to minister in the former communist countries. CBN started and supported thousands of churches from Central Europe to Ukraine and Russia. He made the most of opportunities in Asia as well, with broadcasting agreements and humanitarian outreach in China, a country close to his heart. And he helped other ministries, including Samaritan's Purse, a ministry in Africa started by Billy Graham's son, Franklin. Pat Robinson invested in other people uh, and other ministries. A lot of people don't do that. They focus on what they do, but they don't want to invest in anyone else. Pat invested in other people. Uh, he invested in, in my life, Samaritan's Purse. Well, let's put it this way. He was an investor. He invested in God's work. In the Middle East, he founded a television network that reached much of the Arabic world. And he stood with Israel even during times of war. No question. I, I was always impressed with Pat and uh, his boldness. And he did it in a nice way. And, uh, you know, he wasn't offensive, but he just spoke the truth. And that offended people. When you speak the truth, that offends people. But that's okay. One of his longest lasting legacies may be Regent University, producing leaders in government, law, the arts, and education. You know, one of the things that I appreciated about Pat Robertson was that Pat always had a sense of the world in mind. He had a sense that Christianity just didn't belong in the confines of the church but that it was to permeate all of life. And I think that's why uh, God even led him to uh, start Regent University. Pat served as chancellor of Regent, even after stepping down in 2021 as host of the 700 Club for 55 years. The following year, his beloved wife, Dee Dee, went home to be with the Lord. Despite losing the love of his life and suffering several health setbacks, Pat's faith, obedience, and love for God never wavered. What really makes him a giant is that he never pointed toward himself, but to the cross. At the heart of it all, his invitation to pray. Lord Jesus, right now, I confess to you that I'm not ready, Jesus. I surrender to you now, Lord, and I take you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. A long and faithful life. Well, joining us now is CBN Vice President of Marketing and Development, Callie Everett, and CBN White House Correspondent, Abigail Robertson, two of Pat and Dee Dee Robertson's 14 grandchildren. Uh, first of all, we want to say thank you for making time to be with us. We know that this is a difficult moment for you and your family. Uh, let's just start off a question for both of you. Maybe we'll start with Abby. What do you think will be Pat's lasting legacy? Wow. <laughs> when, you, when you just think about um, what he did in his life, the impact of his life, that is a very hard question to answer. But I think just when I think about it, for me, it's that with God, truly all things are possible. And his life is evidence of that. I mean, he he started this ministry with almost no money, he, uh, certainly no television experience, but just with tremendous faith that God was going to use him, as he said, big and little yeses to what God was putting on his heart. And he just had this unwavering faith in the Lord, even and was willing to walk through doors that God was opening when he had no idea where God was leading him. And that's what he wants for everyone. He, he was, he's passionate about just people knowing that his relationship with God, his walk with the living God is available to everyone mm -hmm. if they're willing to accept God's invitation to be led by his Holy Spirit and um, to be just guided by the Lord each and every minute of our days. Yeah. Uh, we just saw a beautiful picture, Abby, of you and your grandfather uh, on your wedding day. Um, Kelly, I wonder if you might uh, weigh in on your grandfather's legacy? Yes, I, 
I agree with Abby. He always says, you know, with God, all things are possible. And he really believed in the greatness of God and had that on his heart and mind always. His life was one marked by obedience to God. And that's that's really what he wanted to do. My, I was speaking to my aunts recently and they said that he would often say, anytime I failed, it was because God wasn't in it. And anytime I succeeded, it was because God was in it. And God, all of his success, you know, he... He attributes to God, and um, and again, he just believed in the greatness of God, and he knew that God was faithful and could do really big things, and he just wanted to be a part of it, and, and I know he was honored to be a part of so much of the amazing work um, that God did through his life, and so thinking about his legacy, I mean, everything he did, again, was because he wanted to share the gospel. He wanted to share the love of God with the world, and he wanted everyone to know God's love. He wanted everyone to know um, just more about Jesus. And, um, mm. and he had such a powerful experience with God. The God he knew as one who could do anything. And, um, and he wanted to just share that with people and invite people into that relationship with God. Yeah, a, a, a giant of faith, a big public persona. But for both of you, um, he was Granddaddy, uh, Abby, to you, uh, what do you think would surprise people most about the private version of Pat as you knew him? Well, I loved him dearly, and I think it would, I mean, I don't know if this would surprise people, but he practiced what he preached, and even for us in his own family, you know, there were times in my own life where I strayed. Um, I walked away from faith for a little bit, and in, for better or worse, he knew about some things, and but what I found from him was love, was grace, was forgiveness, was redemption. And um, he truly, he just kept praying and he just kept, you know, believing that God had a plan for my life, that God was going to meet me right where I was. And he never gave up hope and faith um, that sure enough, I would um, just come back into the arms of my heavenly father. And it was amazing just to see how he handled that situation. It really just the grace he extended to me really um, impacted my own faith. And, you know, as as we've said, he was so passionate about sharing the gospel and, and he believed you don't have to be combative when you're telling people about Jesus. Just share the gospel with them and see how they respond. And um, because it just it's just such a beautiful, the Lord so radically changed his life and he wanted everyone to experience the love of their heavenly father too. Uh, last question for you. Uh, the, the work your grandfather started now spans the world. And with his loss, that work doesn't stop. In fact, Pat and Gordon often talked about the best days of CBN lying ahead. What do you think comes next, Callie? I think that's a great question and something that, that we've all been thinking about and planning for even with him. He, he says, the Lord does, you know, do not despise the small beginnings. And, um, and he would say the best is yet to come for CBN, which, which is exciting. So in terms of what's, what's to come, um, we just want to continue his legacy. We want to continue preaching the gospel. It's incredible to think of what God has accomplished through the ministry of CBN and the ministry of Operation Blessing and Regent University and all of these amazing organizations. So um, yeah, in terms of, of what's to come, we just want to continue being faithful to God. We want to continue mm -hmm. um, preaching the gospel and we want to continue reaching the nations, you know, and, and right. sharing the love of God with them. Abby and Callie, thank you both so much for sharing your grandfather's story with us and, and his legacy. Um, and our hearts are with your family and um, prayers for your family as well, both of you. Thank you. I could stand by Pat Robertson's side and hold up his hand and, and pray with him. And Next, the barrier-breaking history of the Christian Broadcasting Network. Stay with us for more of this special edition of Faith Nation. Well, as you probably already know, Faith Nation is just one of the many productions here at the Christian Broadcasting that's, Network. That's right. From the humble beginnings of a man with little more than a man with a mission, with Pat Robertson at the helm, CBN has grown to a global ministry. Broadcasting more than 60 years, the work of CBN has impacted hundreds of millions around the world. CBN. The Christian Broadcasting Network presents the following program. On October 1st, 1961, Pat Robertson, a Bible in hand, 
stepped in front of a television camera for the first time. While that inaugural broadcast barely made it around the block, it was all part of the plan to spread the gospel around the world through the art and science of television. And I wanted to be part of God's plan, and I think that his plan is for world evangelization and to bring millions to the kingdom, and he's let me be part of it. By any standard, his work in and through television has been incredible. As Pat emerged as a media innovator, cultural influencer and spiritual leader, and mentor to people all over the world, Franklin Graham puts things in perspective. There's Holy Spirit-filled power in the gospel message. And of course, uh, this network of, of Pat's life uh, has touched so many millions of people with this power of God, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that has transformed and changed lives by the millions. And I just thank God for his life and for his ministry. A television pioneer in his own right, Pat was always an early adapter, using the latest broadcast and television technologies to get CBN's flagship show, The 700 Club, to viewers everywhere. From cable to satellite, and now the internet. The show and the gospel are accessible to practically every person on the planet. Also under Pat's leadership, the 700 Club has taken many forms, using indigenous hosts and programming to reach people through their culture and in their native language. CBN has also produced films, a 24-hour online news channel, and of course, the enormously popular children's animated series, Superbook, that started in 1981 and was reimagined in 2009. That's a whole lot better than my magic card shuffle. Pat's influence in the secular world is also remarkable. Through thoughtful commentary and by engaging political and cultural leaders, he's given voice to Christian thought and views on the social and political issues facing our world. To join hearts and voices in prayer for peace in the Middle East. A balanced budget. We are not enemies of China. We are not enemies of the Russians. We have more energy than any other country in the world. Rob Allman, vice president of CBN News. I think Pat's contribution to religious broadcasting is that he took religious broadcasting into the mainstream. You are reproached for being Christ's followers. That's a great privilege. As they avoid, in my opinion, stories that go against powers that be, whether they're political interests or sometimes special interests or corporate interests. Pat Robertson is simply a pioneer and a visionary. General Clark, what do you learn when you're on the ground? Is Putin trying to uh, stir up something to have a wider war? Well, he's definitely putting the framework in place to, to use military power again. But he has military means, he has economic means, and he has political means to try to hurt Ukraine. Also, to Pat's credit, his efforts to break down racial barriers in the TV industry, American culture, and the church. In fact, Ben Kenchlow, Pat's longtime co-host and friend, was the first African-American to co-host a daily TV show. Now deceased, Ben had this to say about his 20 years working alongside Pat. We had the matchless privilege of being a part of what God was doing, and I could stand by Pat Robertson's side and hold up his hand and, and pray with him and, you know, cry with him and laugh with him and see God do incredible things for people. Which brings us back to the plan. A plan that for 60 years has seen millions around the world find hope, healing, and salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, we have probably seen more people come to the Lord through CBN than any other organization in the world. But it, it wasn't me, it was God. So he gets the glory, but it's amazing. It is simply amazing how many millions of people have come to Jesus. Astounding. Yeah, he's just inspirational, and um, it's, it's a privilege to get to work for CBN. I couldn't agree more. We'll be right back with more Faith Nation after this. In 1996, 90% of CBN's audience was in the United States. Today, 90% of our audience is international. CBN undoubtedly has experienced explosive growth carrying out the mission to spread the gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth. Take a look. While CBN works diligently in Israel, it has not forgotten its call to every nation. 
One of the newest endeavors by CBN is the relaunching of a Spanish-speaking talk show called Club 700 Hoy. Bienvenidos a Club 700 Hoy. Es un placer compartir este tiempo tan especial contigo. Club 700 Hoy is a Spanish version of the 700 Club for the U.S. Hispanic population primarily. And we follow the same format as the club, but of course with culturally relevant stories for the Latino population and with uh, Hispanic hosts that can relate to the audience. Wow, Roberto, qué privilegio que pudiste entrevistar a Rudy. Totalmente, sí. If you look at the demographics, it's pretty clear that the U.S. Hispanic population is playing and will play an incredibly important role in the United States and its culture and its development. I mean, right now, the U.S. Hispanic population is the largest ethnic minority group in the United States. And some estimates say that it will reach about 25% of the population by around 2045. That may be even more. And so they're going to influence the spirituality of the nation. And we're just moving to God's heart, responding to his heart for this people group. Well done, good and faithful servant. Words I think we all long to hear when our lives come to an end. Yeah, while Pat's servanthood brought him recognition throughout his life, as he told CBN Scott Ross upon the release of his last memoir, it was all for the glory of God. One little final thing. Yes, sir. God entrusted you with a lot. Yes. But he also trusted you, and you haven't failed him. Well, I've tried. You I have not. Failed. You yeah. are sitting here, and there's, the, unfortunately, so many men get to that level, they not, not many, but they, you didn't fail them. Well done, good and faithful servant. Well, the secret, Scott, is to realize you're nothing. And every day I tell the Lord and I tell myself that I'm nothing. And he said, having done all these things, say we're unprofitable servants, we've done our duty. And so I look around and this is a wonderful university and CBN is leading millions of people to the Lord, and Operation Blessing is feeding all these people, and the ACLJ is fighting for liberty and all this stuff. But the big thing is, I give him glory. A towering legacy of faith and obedience, and of course, our hearts, our thoughts, and our prayers are with the Robertson family and uh, all of the ministries under the CBN family. Yeah, we're just so grateful for his life, and I, th I think the example that he left all of us and the legacy. Thank you so much for watching.